Thank you for tuning back in and thanks for watching this video. This is going to be part one of a new video series covering uh, building a Tweed amp, uh, which is a 5F1 circuit. Uh, I purchased this complete DIY kit from stumac.com and while this isn't my first kit build, uh, this will be my first tube amp kit that I've done with Stumac. I'll add that uh, Stumac has no way helped sponsor this video or series and I purchased this kit at, at full price so all, all the opinions are or are, are my own. Uh, I have some previous experience building a uh, Princeton 5F2A circuit kit, which is very similar to the 5F1 uh, from Mojo, Mojotone.com. In this video, I'll go over uh, what comes in the kit, in my, including my first impressions, and uh, give a, an overview of the 5F1 circuit design. Uh, as you can see in front of you, this is a lot of the components. Uh, the kit came in two boxes. Uh, one box there was the speaker cabinet and then the other box was all the parts uh, and the parts box starting with uh, the components box came in a real nice uh, kind of like a fishing tackle box uh, the reusable has all the uh, capacitors sockets uh, you know strips speaker jacks all, all the small parts that are going to be needed uh, for the circuit uh, which I thought was a very nice touch to, to come in here and keep it nice and separated that way. Oh, you know, it also has this real nice label. Uh, next is the, the three tubes. The 5F1 circuit has three tubes. It has a, one ECC83, which is also a 12AX7 uh, preamp tube. Uh, has a 5Y3, 5Y3 power rectifier, and a 166S output tube because this, this is a 5-watt uh, single amp or single-ended tube. Uh, these are all JJ electronic tubes, which I guess are are known. They're not high end by any means, but uh, I've used them before, and uh, they they never let me down, so I have no no issues with JJ electronic tubes. Uh, additionally, uh, the fiber boards and eyelets. So this is where all the components for the, the tube circuit will get eventually built. Uh, it's pretty well made. Uh, all the all the eyelets are pretty well seated and very firm in there, and I, I think they'll give some firm solder joints. And this, this bit would be the backing plate to uh, prevent the, the components from grounding out on the chassis once it's inserted into that. Uh, next is the, the pushback wire, the wire that came with the amp. I don't know how much feet they gave me, but it looks more than enough. And this is, uh, I guess, the period correct stuff. It's uh, all hard, it's not braided, it's all solid core. I right? actually, this is actually some braided stuff. This is all solid core. And uh, it's really easy to work with because it's like plastic coated. It actually pushes back, so you can, you don't really have to strip this. You can just kind of push it back to, to get what you need, which makes it a lot easier when you're doing multiple connections and hooking them into the to the eyelet board and everything else. Uh, next is the transformers. Came with two. Uh, it's a power transformer. It's marked with the uh, Mojo 760. I don't know if this has anything to do with the. Uh, mojotone.com but it's a it's pretty beefy transformer all the wires seem to be pretty pretty done, well done and uh, I will notice that uh, some of the wires on here this focuses uh, they didn't come pre 10 which is not a huge deal they're easy to 10 but uh, just something that you typically like to see is wires they come pre 10 for the output transformer it's uh, marked with NOS 771 it seems pretty small pretty basic seems it's been shellac dipped but uh, the leads are pre tinned and it's just not much power coming out of this amp so uh, it's probably more than enough uh, next the speaker came with an Italian made Jensen it's an 8 inch speaker uh, and there's no doesn't say what model it is it just says Jensen special design uh, Jensen speakers are been around forever and uh, are known to be pretty good so uh, this seems to be a pretty pretty decent speaker to be included with this, this kit uh, next is the speaker cabinet uh, which is one of the high points I'm actually surprised how well this is it's pretty light it's all solid pine uh, very well done all the all the joints seem to be very good. I can see there's their finger joined and glued. Uh, the tweed covering is very precise. All the screws on it seem to be very well done. Uh, and you know, it's solid, so it's not uh, 
part press board or, or particle board. It, it's uh, very good and kind of uh, what you'd expect out of a 1950s tweed amp. Uh, it is non-lacquered though, but uh, that's something if you wanted to do, you could probably easy lacquer this if you wanted to. Uh, that handle on here, uh, I'm not 100% sure, but I think it is leather. It looks like it and kind of smells like it too. So that's something, you know, as you use it and gets, gets some nice patina with age. Uh, next is uh, the chassis, which I say for kind of last because that's the only low point on here. Uh, from the outside, it looks very good. It's very heavy gauge, solid still. Uh, these, uh, the screen printing or how these labels seem to be very well done. It uh, seems like there may be some type of enamel on there. But uh, there are a few areas on here that has some rust spots on here. There's one there. And on the inside where the seams are, there's some rust. Uh, I didn't contact Stumac because in reality I, I don't think it's that much big a deal. I don't think it's going to show when the amp is complete. And uh, and if Stumac you do come across this video, maybe take put a little more effort into your QAQC on that. And I just noticed here like some of the some of the flakes even coming off. So it seems very well made. And uh, but if there was a, a low quality product in here, this is this is the only thing that I could potentially see stand out that. Uh, I've seen better. Uh, my Mojo Tone didn't have any issues with the with the chassis. And last is the instruction manual, uh, which also I think is a high point. Uh, oftentimes nowadays, you will get instructions that uh, use a piece of paper just directing you to a website. So to actually get some printed out instructions is uh, very, very thoughtful in my opinion. It's very well done. It has a clear plastic covering wire bound and uh, has very good uh, pictures and very step-by-step -step instructions which uh, my point of comparison my Mojo Tone amp didn't come with anything so I was just kind of on my own trying to figure it out off the off the layout schematic so uh, I think following this along may make it much easier uh, additionally inside tucked in was a full layout uh, or then of the uh, the checklist of, of all the parts and components because uh, that'd be pretty bad if you got into building this and then all of a sudden you realize you're missing a, uh, a resistor but uh, I'll kind of let it leave here if someone wants to pause it should a full breakdown of whatever every er, all the components that are there and uh, and also serve as a good bill of materials if anyone was trying to build one of these amps with parts uh, they bought individually or just laying around And that's uh, pretty much it for us. Everything that came in, uh, came in. Uh, if there's any specific questions about a part or something in the, you know type of a component that I didn't discuss, uh, please leave a comment below, and I'll gladly answer back. Uh, the instructions also included a very uh, in-depth schematic uh, outlining the 5F1 circuit, as you see in front of you here. And uh, I'll go in and do a. Kind of an introductory uh, on how the circuit works. If you, if anyone that wants me to do a more in-depth explanation on this circuit, I'd be happy to do so. Just let me know in the comments below. But uh, this will just kind of give a uh, brief synopsis. Uh, when I first started uh, reading schematics, I, I found they were kind of very difficult to read. But if you broke them down into uh, kind of into what each part does it makes it much more simpler and uh, there's two two great YouTube channels out there I'd recommend that I've learned a lot from which is Blue Girl Electronics and Uncle Doug uh, I owe them a lot from an information standpoint uh, kind of where I'm at right now so uh, in addition to subscribing to my channel I strongly recommend going in and checking out what they have because uh, they, they've probably forgotten more about tube amps than, uh, than I currently know. Uh, taking this the amp will start with the power so down here. Uh, you see this is the power cord coming from your wall, the AC mains. Uh, this is the, the earth ground going back into your uh, earth ground and your, your main power. And then you got your, your hot, your fuse here. And uh, this is going into and, and powering your power transformer, which is the symbol you see here. And there's three sets of windings coming off your power transformer. Uh, this first set of windings up here. This, uh, this is your 5 volt, uh, 5 volt that powers your, your, your filament for the rectifier tube. Uh, this is your high voltage here with the center tap in the middle uh, going to each one of the, uh, 
cathodes of uh, of their power rectifier and then here's another winding which is your 63.3 volts which goes and empowers the heater filaments on the 12AX7 and the 6V6 power tube. Uh, this rectifier tube what it does is it takes the AC power coming from your wall uh, and rectifies it which basically you know this is a diode so what it does is it coming out of here uh, looks like the DC so it basically converts the AC coming from your wall to DC voltage that uh, can be used by your amp. Uh, moving kind of towards what uh, your guitar plugs in here so up here this is uh, you got two inputs on this amp and you see you got one meg 68k and 68k uh, resistors and these do the initial shaping so this is kind of your normal and bright tone uh, or normal instrument inputs that you would have on the amp and uh, based upon how you which one you plug into your signal gets routed differently through these combination of these three resistors before it goes in and hits the grid uh, and, and half the first half of the 12AX7 uh, tube in the gain stage and in this gain stage this is where your guitar volume or guitar electronic signal coming in here it'll get uh, initially stepped up uh, before it finally gets passed off to the output so in this first uh, it comes in here to this the grid here on the first half gets passed up to this plate and before on the outside of the tube coming in and hitting a 0.022 microfarad uh, coupling cap uh, this coupling cap here combined with this one, one meg potentiometer forms a, a high pass filter which allows the, the high frequencies to pass through but rolls off the the lows and this potentiometer here and you see here it's called the processing this is uh, this is what the, your tone knob is uh, tone volume in one uh, several other amps in this process you may have more combination it's a little more complex having different combinations of capacitors and resistors but and this is very simple uh, but uh, it, it's just one t one one knob and uh, just comes back up here so once it goes through here in a combination of this potentiometer and this capacitor it gets passed back here to the grid of the second half of the 12ax7 before leaving uh, out the, the plate here, going through another 0.022 microfarad coupling cap, uh, leading in, well, and if you notice here, there's another uh, there's another high pass filter, but this one's being fixed. Going through another filter before going into the grid of the output power tube. Before leaving the plate here, coming out to your output transformer, and does impedance match, and, and drops the voltage to well, really, impedance match to, and allows it to a lower voltage that comes out here to the 4 ohm speaker cabinet. Uh, additionally, you see here there's a negative feedback circuit uh, coming off through a 22k resistor going back in to the cathode of the second half of the 12AX7. That negative feedback kind of helps smooth out the, the tone and is is uh, common in uh, many different. Uh, tube amp uh, schematics. Uh, this one doesn't have a potentiometer, potentiometer so it's a fixed with the 22k. But there's some amps out there that allow you to uh, shape that to get some further tone shaping. And that's pretty much uh, pretty much it for, for this. It's a very simple simple circuit. Uh, if you do some research on a Fender Champ, you know it, it was, it's been around since the 1950s and was used by a lot of uh, early artists to include, I think, Eric Clapton who recorded some of his uh, great songs on the Fender Champ. Uh, single ended 5 watt power out out so it's uh, it does get loud probably not loud enough to gig with but uh, it, it does get some really great tones at, uh, at a reasonable volume which is uh, one of the reasons why I'm making this amp uh, so uh, if you haven't already done so already please uh, like comment subscribe and if you, again if you have any questions about this the components in this kit or uh, a more in-depth uh, more in-depth uh, synopsis of, of, of this circuit the 5f1 uh, please comment below and i thank you for watching